Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. My name is Pinky, for those of you guys that don't know, and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my lovelies. I want to wish every single one of you guys happy Valentine's. We are in the month of love. I hope that you guys are excited, whether you're in prospective relationships, whether you're single. We have tons of spell videos coming through for you guys for exactly that, to draw in love and romance into your life. As always, we are here to do the monthly readings. Yes, we are a little bit behind. We apologize for that, but it's been extremely busy. Those of you guys that are interested in any of our services, you can find the link to our business down below. Let's get into it. We are going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to start off with Pisces, as I always <laughs> get emails that Pisces are always the last because you are the 12th Zodiac, but we want to show love to everyone. So this time we're going to start it backwards. So we're going to start off with Pisces all the way to Aries. Okay. All right, let's get into it. Let's see what's going on for this month. For all of the signs, we're going to begin here with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For this month of February 2023, let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces is definitely going to be a sign that is already experiencing a lot of changes, a lot of changes, um, certain things coming up that you might have to deal with or address, but it is a beautiful thing because it's going to set you on the correct path. It's, it's so that you can move forward without having to feel like you're taking a few steps backwards. It's almost like the universe is conspiring to help you uh, push through and move forward in a positive way. Um, like I said, dealing with some type of issues that may come up. However, it's to the best of your interest because you don't have to worry about that later on. All right, here we go. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of February, 2023. Here we go. All right. Powerful cards here, Pisces. There is almost a feeling of having to deal with what others around you feel uh, is right versus what is right for you at this point in time. The Hierophant does speak to me about feeling of uh, responsibilities or feeling like, you know, uh, there are certain decisions that you're wanting to make because at this point, uh, for some of you guys, you may be experiencing like getting to getting to the point of culmination of something. Uh, there is something that's been brewing, something that you've been dealing with. Um, and I see you a bit hesitant, Pisces, uh, in regards to executing and making up your mind or making a decision. However, they are telling you here that in this month, there is a lot of decisions that are going to be made um, or that you're going to need to be making. Um, you don't want to procrastinate no longer. What they're telling you is it's time to execute. It's time to um, really own those decisions and don't look back. Um, again, I feel like for some of you guys, you may be dealing with, you know, almost like a, we talk about it on an everyday type of thing. Could be responsibilities, could be people around you, the people that you live with. Uh, this could be family, relatives, Um for others of you, this could be in regards to a relationship. And it's almost like I had this perspective or I had this idea of how things would be or how I would want it to move forward a certain way. That's not working out at this point. I'm tired of trying or at this point I've reached, you know, uh, my wits end and something obviously has to change because I not I cannot continue um, the way you are. And it's almost like it feels to me like you're going into your true path or your true purpose, Pisces, but it may come, or for you, it may feel like it's coming. Um, it's coming to a feeling of, do I choose my happiness or do I choose what's right? Um, and again, right is not necessarily what's best for you. This is more to do with how you feel internally. Um, so the best, the best way I can describe it is as an example for some of you guys, if you are in a marriage, you may feel like there is stagnant energy or like you guys have both drifted apart. You've been trying to keep it together or holding on to the relationship. But at this point, 
Um, there's like almost no turning back. And in that process, there could have been a situation where you became inspired or where there was a new beginning for some of you guys. And it's almost like a feeling of, do I choose my happiness or do I stay or do I continue uh, holding on to something that is not working out? It's almost a feeling like having to make a decision. And in that decision, there is a feeling of having to do what's right or what's your happiness. And ultimately what spirit is telling you here is it's time to stop sacrificing yourself, Pisces. It's time to really raise your expectations or raise your what matters to you making that a priority making what makes you happy a priority because if you don't make that choice or that you know decision of choosing yourself or what you want it's going to be a rough a rough time so what they're telling you is it's not about, don't let people guilt trip you in this month of, of uh, February, Pisces. Don't allow people to guilt trip you. Don't allow people to make you feel like their happiness is your responsibility. At this point, you have to choose yourself, whatever that means to you. But that's going to be very crucial and very important for this month um, for you Pisces out there. So, let me pull out an oracle card. Spirits, what is the oracle message, the final message that you have here for Pisces in regards to the situation? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. <clears throat> and we have 25. Um, this is an indication of relationships. So again, for some of you guys, it is delivering a decision in regards to a relationship, a partnership, a contract, uh, some type of bond. Um, it is a, a almost like the obligation, you know, obligations that come with commitments. Um, so again, I feel like it correlates uh, ultimately in this life, right? In this life, the biggest commitment or the most important commitment that we should ever have is being true to ourselves and being real and honest and choosing our happiness. All right, my lovelies. Okay. Now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Aquarius for this month of February, 2023? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. A lot of changes for Aquarius coming through. Um, for a lot of you guys, this is in connection with relationships and partnerships. So this could be in every aspect. It could be in, in uh, partnership doesn't have to be relationships. It can be business-wise. It could be um, partnering up with new people or um, I see a lot of people coming in, but I also see people walking out. So it could almost feel like for some of you guys, you're a little bit like disassociating with people or a feeling of being very disconnected. And the reason for this is because um, planet alignments right now, you know, especially when we're talking about Venus, um, it, it's really about the value and love, right? But love in every single aspect of our lives, not just relationships. This is the love that we have for ourselves or the lack thereof that we have. It's almost like there is realizations that are happening right now, um, especially with the Leo's full moon, depending on where that's at in your chart. A lot of like child trauma, um, childhood trauma, uh, but this is the healing of that. So it's dealing with it and understanding, but also healing from that um, to become a better version of yourself or a better partner or to be even prepared um, to begin a new connection or a new relationship or to be able to embrace a, a new cycle in your life here. 
Now, I do see, like I said, I do see that there is a bit of anxiety or you guys may be feeling this already. Um, anxiety in regards to partnerships, like I said, and this is just the validation of that, two of wands and two of cups. So it's about the future. It's about moving forward. What is it that I want for myself? What is it that I'm willing to give at this point? What am I not willing to give up? Um, it's about it's about love, right? The, the, the broader perspective is love here, but it can be as significant as the self-love that you have for yourself and the understanding of what you're willing, like I said, what you're willing to give, what you're willing to offer and what you're not willing to take, meaning what you're not willing to settle with anymore. Um, so there is a higher elevation in regards to how you view yourself and how you view others. Uh, two of Wands and Two of Cups, duality. This has to do with partnerships. Like I said, this is to do with other people around you and those that make you happy and those that create um, chaos and drama and dysfunction. And it is the having the heart-to-heart -heart conversation about, I love you and I love you dearly. Um but you're a very fucking toxic person. And at this point, I got to shake that out, that type of energy. So again, it is about, you know, the value in ourselves and the value in others and how they bring that into our lives. Is it, you know, the love that you're giving? Is it being reciprocated? And this is with friends. This is with relatives. This is with loved ones. This is with partners. Um, even with colleagues, with coworkers, with your boss, with, you know, the people that you deal with on everyday basis. And it is about understanding the value that you bring to the table and being almost unapologetic about what you expect at this point in your life. Um, like I said, it could be a situation where you feel stagnant because you feel like you're not moving forward in regards to your career and finances. And a lot of people around you rely on you. And you don't really see it as them relying on you because maybe you care for them. Maybe they're your friends outside of work. Um, it's like you, you have built this almost like sick of nature, um, right. For them to rely on you. So you don't really see it as an issue, but now there's issues that are coming up that you're like, wait a minute, you know, just because I'm your friend at, you know, at work, uh, it's not fair for me to be picking up after your shit or to make things happen and you sitting back and just, you know, relying on me basically to do. So it's about, like I said, it's about what people are bringing to the table for you in your life and your everyday life and what you're giving out. Is it being reciprocated? It's about balance. It's about understanding that. So again, when we're talking about partnerships and relationships, it's about, like I said, being unapologetic about what you want and, not there's a thing of saying like meeting people halfway I feel like right now it's more so to do with you know people I've done so much for people and they've taken that for granted like you're not messing around anymore Aquarius it's like you are at a point where you're going to feel very empowered very confident about yourself and you're not going to be hesitant about cutting people off if that's needed um, and this is with relationships as well. If you've been dealing with a relationship where it's brought a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress to you, I see you really analyzing like the pros and cons. And if there's more cons that are outweighing the pros, you're walking out of that because you're choosing to be happy. Um, you're choosing to be happy and making yourself a priority. And either they, be, they you know, march to the beat of your drum or you walk away to the beat of your own drum. I hope that makes sense. So there is definitely like an empowering type of energy here that's happening for you guys. And like I said, I feel that this is amazing because, you know, um, Aquarius and Aquarians have this, you know, this energy of collective, you know, what's better for everyone. It's not, it's like very selfless. I wouldn't necessarily say selfless, but it's like, you're not selfish in the aspect of, putting other people's needs, like for the group type of thing. Um, but at this point, it's like, okay, maybe the feeling of like being very relaxed or very passive has put you in a position where you felt like people were taking too much advantage of that. And at this point, it's like I said, I see you like saying, screw it. 
you know, if the, if the cons are definitely outweighing the pros, you are cutting people off left and right. Um, so there's a lot of changes happening there. All right, Spirit, what is the final message here for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? And we have 13. This is about strength. It is exactly what I just said. It's, it's, I see you guys really like stepping into your power. Um, and especially for those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, I feel like there is this burst of energy that you're going to start to feel where you're more sensual and you're not shying away from that sensuality. You're actually embracing it because this is all to do with new beginnings. This is all to do with, um, with trust and it's trust within yourself and trust on those that are around you. So you're being more selective. This is about, uh, you know, at some point in your life, there was lack of independence emotionally. Um, and at this point, it's like, I'm choosing, you know, I'm choosing what makes me happy, what works for me. And I'm not going to feel any type of way about it. Even if like, as an example, for those of you guys that are, um, you know, deciding not to have kids, for example, and everyone's judging and everyone's like, oh, but at some point you'll want to, maybe you felt some type of way in the past. Whereas now, if that same conversation comes up, you're like, if you've made up your mind, you're like, no, this is exactly what I want. And no one's going to change my mind. Um, you're not really being patient, but in a very positive way, because I feel like I said, I see you empowered. I see you um, really taking it back to what works for you. Um, and like I said, those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, there is definitely new beginnings here. Um, this is about, you know, trust. Uh, this is about a curiosity or being more spontaneous, being more open, um, and viewing things from a broader perspective, be more open-minded. All right, my lovelies. Now we are moving on to... Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For the month of February 2023, what is unfolding for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For this month of February 2023. All right, here we go. <laughs> wow. Okay, Capricorn. There is, there's a new passion. I see you being inspired. There's an idea, something that could potentially, um, Turn into something that completely transforms your life. We're talking about career. We're talking about finances. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be even like thinking and debating whether you should do or make a career change. For some of you guys, this could be changing location. Um, and I see you guys really like thinking about it. <laughs> it's it's giving me very strong um very strong Jupiter vibes and Jupiter energy is all about expansion, right? It's it, Jupiter's the one planet that tells you, um, you know, shoot for the stars, think big. Um, it's not about being cautious right now. It's about what is the bigger picture? What is the bigger perspective here? Um, and again, I feel like for a lot of you guys, there is a massive opportunity that is going to be unfolding sometime in February for you guys. Um, that is collectively connected to your finances and to your location. Um, so as an example, if some of you guys have been debating whether you should change residency, uh, residence or whether you should um, move to a different location, I definitely see you guys making that decision, making that move. And now is the time to do that move. Why? Because we're talking about majorly transforming your life. You have the tower next to the world card. This is a major shakeup in a very positive way because you have the Ace of Wands with the Ten of Pentacles. It's like uh, an opportunity that shows up that is unexpected or that comes to you. 
um, almost feeling like perfect timing type of thing. But I do fear, uh, sorry, I do feel like there's a little bit of fear because you're like, what if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't, you know, pan out the way I want it to? What if, what ifs basically with the two of pentacles here? But what they're telling you is that like, again, I got immediate Jupiter vibes. So it's like, think big right now, Capricorn. Um, when we're talking about career and finances, uh, there is definitely an opportunity. Someone is giving something to you. So this could be a higher promotion. This could be an opportunity uh, that is going to bring to you much more money, um, but it may come at the cost of relocating. And if that's what you're debating, what they're telling you is definitely make that move. We have the five of swords here and the five of swords is always about making decisions based on ego. And with the tower and the world, I feel like you are more willing to play it safe than to think big or go home type of thing. Um, and what they're telling you is that don't let that stop you. Don't, don't allow the fear of the unknown really play a part in this major opportunity that's coming to you. Um, because you may miss out. So again, it's, it's almost like, you've been praying or asking for some type of opportunity. It finally comes through, but it may not come ideally exactly how you wanted it. It comes with something that feels like it's scary. Um, scary in the sense of having to make some type of sacrifice. So the uncertainty here with the five of swords is almost like your pride, your ego, um, you know, keeping you from being able to, you know, fully move forward in very momentum, massive energy moving forward. Um, and you don't want that, like I said, that unknowing, the, the unknown to scare you, scare you so much that you're scared of like basically taking that step. And what they're telling you is definitely take it Capricorn. It's a culmination of something. For some of you guys, you've been struggling financially. Uh, for others of you, this could be relationship wise. It could be that there's an opportunity that comes to you through work where there is some type of relocation that needs to happen. It could be commute, but I feel like for the majority, it could be like some type of sacrifice of having to move from where you're at to another location. And that's what's scaring you. That's what's kind of, you know, scary. Um, and of course, change is always scary, especially Capricorns, right? <laughs> We're stuck in the mud. It's like, if it's, if you're not used to it, it's going to create, um, having the need to get out of your comfort zone or out of a habit, um, that could be very, very, you know, almost, it's so scary that it kind of freezes you, but you don't want to let this opportunity pass you by Capricorn, because I'm telling you right now, it's going to bring in a lot of success, success, um, to your finances, but also success to a new passion or a new beginning that's happening here. So this, for those of you guys that are single out there, could be that there is a major change or move that's going to happen in the month of February, going all the way to March. Um, but you may actually, it changes your life completely because it affects your finances, but it also brings to you a new chapter, um, a new romance, a new opportunity to connect with someone that is going to be playing a major role in your life. Um, let's see what your final message is here, Capricorn. Yeah, definitely don't let, um, don't let for the month of February, definitely don't let the fear get the best of you. If there is a decision or an opportunity that comes to you and you feel like you're kind of, you know, dwelling about it a bit because it's, it's scary. Um, that's when you know, you need to jump. That's when you know that you need to be all in and whatever it is that you're trying to make happen, because, you know, sometimes our mind psychs us out and you don't want to be, it's kind of like that saying goes, um, don't let the fear keep you from, you know, uh, hitting the ball basically. All right. What is the final message here for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to their situation? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. We have number 30. Beautiful here. Talking about sexuality, intimacy, um, initiative. And this is primarily the energy that I'm sensing. It's like, I feel like I'm being pushed forward, uh, but I'm so scared. It's kind of like when you get in a roller coaster and 
it's going up, you know, that, that, that feeling at the pit of your stomach, like you're nervous, you're scared. It feels like that. And sometimes that could psych us out and keep us from, you know, jumping 100% into what we're doing. But if that's, if it feels scary, then that means that you're on to something. Um, and I don't mean scary, like in panic, I mean, scary, like, like it's scary because you don't know what, like, if it's promised, if it's a, you know, successful, um, venture, uh, and if it's that feeling, that's when you know that you need to jump and take that opportunity. Definitely. Um, because like I said, it, it's, it's about initiative. It's about grabbing the bull by its horns <laughs> and romance is definitely connected to your finances. Uh, Capricorn. All righty, my lovelies. Now let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. What is unfolding for Sagittarius for this month of February 2023? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. One more. All right, here we go. Very, very interesting, you guys. You guys seen me shuffle. <laughs> we have the tower here and the world card again. And the ten of pentacles. Wow. Okay. Sagittarians, if you guys are dealing with a Capricorn or interested in a Capricorn, listen to their previous reading because it may be tied and may be connected here. I'm definitely seeing the same type of energy. We have a lot of the same cards. The only difference is the six of wands. What they're showing me here is, again, um, Sagittarians, if you guys are dealing with the Capricorn, this may, you know, be a specific message for you. Don't let your ego and your pride keep you from missing out on an opportunity of a connection that is going to end in marriage. So, again, this is a very specific message. It may not connect with everyone. It is a general reading. But what's coming through is don't let your pride and your ego keep you from missing out on the type of life partner you've always wanted, especially if it has to do with a Capricorn. Um, because what they're showing me here is pride or ego is in the way of you making a decision that you know you have to make. And there's, again, fear tied to this. There's fear of I don't want to be the one to bend the knee. I don't want to be the one to um, reach out. I don't want to be the one to whatever. But I feel like there is definitely life-changing happening here for you guys. And if you're connecting with this message, reach out, Sagittarius, because this person is definitely going to completely transform and change your life. And I do see this actually moving very quickly into a long-term commitment. We're talking about a lifetime partner here. Now, for others of you, what they're telling you here is whatever it is that you connected, your ego connected to who you were in the past. And I say who you were because you're no longer that person. But there is an old version of you that you still embrace because your ego is not letting that part of you die. Um, it's almost like a survival type of thing. And for some of you guys, it could be survival. It could be that you were raised um, almost on survival mode. And you no longer need to be on survival mode because you're not being present. And by not being present, you may miss out on opportunities that are going to completely transform your life. But in order to go towards that, you have to let a part of your ego die, a part of older version of you die to be able to fully embrace this major change in your life. So if you, as an example, have a reputation, if for some of you, um, you have a tendency of like <clears throat> dating multiple people. You're a charmer. You're the type that, you know, you've always been known for like 
going from one person to another or whatever. And you felt like everyone has that idea or that perspective of you. You feel now like you have feelings or emotions towards someone, but you're like, how is that going to make me look? How is that going to, like, I don't want to be all corny or whatever. I don't want to jump into something that I know that it's never lasted. Like you don't want to commit to someone or something that you know is of value. Perhaps you've never dealt with someone like that, but there is fear because you've never done that in the past. But let me tell you something, Sagittarius. This doesn't have to be romantic. This could be career-wise. This could be finances. This could be your everyday life. It could be a habit or something that you have a tendency of doing. And there is almost like an understanding that, you know, you're being guided. Things are going to start to come into your life, Sagittarius, where you feel like it's God's timing. And it is. But the reason for that is because you have to elevate yourself. You have to go into this newer version of yourself. But it's going to come at the cost of pride or at the cost of what you, how you view yourself. So this is more to do with the fear of letting go of something or a defense mechanism within yourself, because that has been hindering your progress. That's been keeping you stuck. That's been keeping you in a hole, so to speak. And at this time, opportunities are going to be flying left and right. But in order to take those opportunities, you need to let go of either old habits or old ideas or an aspect or version of yourself that no longer correlates, no longer connects with you, but because you've been known for that or because you feel like that is a part of who you are, you're so scared. But just because you haven't done something in the past doesn't mean you're not capable of attaining it now. Do you see what, a, do you see what, a, excuse me, do you see what I'm saying? It's almost like, Example, you haven't been able to find a long-term job. You've gone from one job to another. You've done different things, many things in your life, but you never really felt pulled or passionate about something. And then everyone knows that. And it's like, they have this perspective of you. And because they have this perspective of you, the one time that there's an opportunity or something that comes along and you share that with someone or with friends or the people around you, instead of them encouraging you, it's like they laugh about it or they make comment like backhanded comments. And it's like you doubt yourself. But what they're, what spirit is telling you is like, no, Sagittarius, you are at the brink of change in your life that is going to affect you for the next coming 20 years. Keep in mind, Pluto, you guys. Pluto's a slow moving planet. And it affects us for 20 years. So there is something here that's happening that is going to be unfolding in a positive way for you. But for in, in order for you to be able to fully commit to that, to fully give your all in that, it's going to take for you to be confident in yourself to trust in yourself. Powerful message here. All right, let's see what is the final message here for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. And again, Sagittarius, if you're dealing with a Capricorn, there's some type of connection here with something to do with a Capricorn for you guys um, because cards are exactly alike. <clears throat> the only difference is the six of wands here and that's ego that's pride don't let your ego stop you from succeeding so much to a point in your life that you've never experienced this type of abundance this type of stability this type of success don't let that fear of not being able to accomplish it or not being able to make it happen don't let it hold you back Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the final message here? Okay, here we go. And we have three. This is dreams. 
This is longing. These are desires. This is a journey. Target, freedom, courage. You are quickly moving forward, Sagittarius, making major, major leaps. Follow your passions. Follow what your heart is telling you right now because that's going to lead you to success. All right. Exciting. All right. Now let's move on to Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For the month of February 2023, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Oof. Scorpio. Excuse me. Major breakthroughs, major breakthroughs are going to be experienced from now all the way to March. There is major momentum. I see you guys getting a lot of attention at work. This could be uh, in regards to a successful project, uh, a new endeavor that may come your way uh, where you're definitely going to succeed. There is a lot of notoriety is what I'm seeing here with the fool and the star card. That is like being so confident in what you're doing because it's like <clears throat> everyone likes to be told that they're doing a good job. I don't care who you are. Everyone needs that type of support, right? The more encouraging they are to you, the more you're focused and the more you want to attain and continue growing. And I feel like those around you at work or with your finances, there is, there's been a difficulty that you've been dealing with. And it could be because of, of a lot of like uh, responsibilities. It could be feeling like you're overburdened. Um, but through that, I definitely see success for you guys. And it's like, you're finally being able to see the fruits of your labor. You're finally being you know, notice at work, there is like, people are knowing your name, they're knowing what you're doing. Um, if you run your own business, this is like your brand getting out there or people really taking notice. And it's like opportunities that are coming your way based off of your hard work and determination. Um, I see you extremely confident. I see almost like a, a you're cementing a new path. There is something, um, there is something about you that stands out from the rest. It's almost like kind of the situation where you're at a job or you start a new with a new company or something, right? And you make a comment like, oh, I want to move up. And they tell you, oh, forget it. There's people here that have been here five, six years and they're still doing the same thing. And it's like the moment you stepped in you really demand it so much of yourself that you quickly started elevating or you quickly started rising or you quickly started moving forward. And it's like people are anxious and excited about, about saying that they had a role in your success, especially higher ups. So again, because I see the potential in you and they, they're finally like after the hard work and determination, they're finally seeing that. It's like they want to make it an easier transition to help you grow because somehow it's going to reflect on them. And of course, they want those praises. So I definitely do see a lot of momentum here when we're talking about growth, expansion. Um, like I said, you may feel sometime in February, like the middle of February, even all the way to the end of February, feeling like there's a lot on your plate, but you are definitely smashing these goals, Scorpio. You're definitely making it happen. Uh, try the best you can to ground yourself here and there uh, or meditate to help you release all that stress so you don't carry that stress to to your home. 
uh, for those of you guys that run your own business or if you work from home, I would highly encourage you guys to do cleansings. Um, this is going to help the energy flow more organically so that there is no um, blockages that are being created there. Um, Cause I do see a little bit, a little bit of stress, a little bit of uh, feeling like you're overwhelmed a bit, um, but things will progressively, you'll be able to, you know, keep your thumb on things, so to speak. Um, for others of you, there is a decision that recently was made. If you've been dealing with a person or a partner for quite a while, and it almost feels like you're not really sure where this is going, or if it's going to be some type of commitment, I definitely see them making that decision. For some of you guys, uh, it's a conversation that comes up about commitment, about making plans or about moving together. Um, I don't see it happening in February, but I do see those conversations happening or they may mention something that you were definitely not expecting. Um, could have been a person that's, you know, said that they don't want to get married again. For others of you that maybe they're not, they don't believe in like marriage or something like that. And all of a sudden they make a comment about that. Uh, I see them really getting ready, basically getting prepared for that commitment. Um, so awesome, awesome energy here, Scorpio. Let's see what your final message is here for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February, 2023. We have number 29. This is talking about uh, female energy. Uh, or if you're masculine, this is your partner, or if, you know, whatever your preference is, could be a partner. Um, this is talking about femininity. This is talking about uh, being more passive. Um, I feel like for some of you guys, if this is your partner, it could indicate, like I said, there is something about feeling like they weren't that excited or they weren't that open to some type of commitment or higher level of commitment. But I see that finally them taking, taking those steps uh, or talking about it or being more open about it. Um, but I definitely do see a higher level of uh, energy here, a higher level of commitment. For others of you, this could indicate a female energy around you at work that may uh, be the one that came up uh, in regards to wanting to get notoriety off of your work, not necessarily a negative thing. This could be a positive thing if they have pull, um, because I feel like they will help you definitely keep growing or uh, keep expanding in that business. All right, my lovelies. <laughs> All right, now we're going to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February, 2023. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February, 2023. One more shuffle. All right, here we go. Libra. Okay, Libra, if you've been dealing with a situation where your partner or person that you were dealing with um, is very inconsistent at this point, I feel like you already know um, that their attention is elsewhere. Uh, this is talking to me about um, quickly moving on or quickly, you know, moving on to the next stage or moving on to the next person, I should say. Um, they have a tendency of being inconsistent. You could be dating a serial dater, a person that just, you know, loves to go after people. And once they attain them, it's like they quickly move on to the next person, especially if you guys recently have been blocked or recently they're just not responding to you. What spirit is telling you is at this point, you got to keep it pushing. Do not waste your time with people that are just, you know, um, kind of stringing you along, um, people that kind of sell you a, a dream, you know, they present themselves to be the perfect person, the perfect partner. And then after that, there's so many inconsistencies and you keep holding on to the hope or desire 
well, this is not the person I fell in love with. I felt in love with a different version and I'm waiting for that version to come. The truth is that that version was never there because they, they're they not that person. Uh, so it's I'm hearing like selling a dream, selling an idea of who they wanted you to think they are so that you can continuously keep allowing them to string you along or to come back into your life uh, whenever they don't have other things or other options. Um, there are revelations that are going to be unfolding for you for this month. Now, what they're showing me here is for those of you guys that have been single for a while, there is almost this energy of some type of connection with someone. And it could be a connection from a long distance. It could be a person that you dated in the past. It could be that they're no longer in that location or where you're at. Um, there is almost like this energetic connection that is still there. And I feel that the reason why you haven't moved on and the reason why they haven't moved on is because there is still emotional attachments there. Now, this could be positive, this could be negative, depending, as an example, if this is a person that you hurt you so bad that you would not ever be able to forgive them, then this is a negative thing because it keeps you constantly comparing that type of connection or that type of love to those that come. And that is never going to be realistic. Um, so if that's the case, my advice would be to do a cutting of cords. Um, why? Because it is currently affecting your romance. It is affecting your love life. Uh, if this is a person that perhaps there's still some type of hope or some type of desire uh, for them to come back around, um, then just know and understand that that emotional connection is there. And partly if you're missing them or randomly think of them, it may not necessarily be because you are still uh, connected to them or that you're still interested in them, I should say. It could be that you're picking up on their energy because there's still an emotional attachment there. But if you're the first scenario and you were dealing with someone and they ghosted you or there was some type of blocking, social media or something, um, you got to keep it pushing. This person is entertaining other options. They've already moved on you're holding on to an idea that was never really who they were. All right, let's see what is the final message here for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, we have a card flying out, you guys. Give me a second. And it is number 35. So we're talking about success. We're talking about security. We're talking about certainty here. But we're also talking about conclusions. And often when I see this card, give me a second, let me get it. And often when I see this card, it indicates that a lot of the times we become stagnant or we become stuck in a situation because we fear that there may be some type of change that miraculously, miraculously happens. <laughs> but what they're telling you is, you shall remain stuck or stagnant until you decide to move on and to move on to be able to fully experience new beginnings that are more in connection to your manifestations, to the support that you're needing or wanting. This is about work putting the work. But if it's a situation where you're putting the work and you've been putting the work from the beginning of the relationship, then you're the only one that's working towards that goal. So there is something that needs to happen here. There is some type of clarity. Perhaps you're not really seeing things for what they are. We have the seven of cups here. So there could be illusions. Like I said, it's almost giving me the vibe of a person that, you know, presents themselves to be perfect. They're so thoughtful. They're so caring. They love bomb you. And then they ghost you. And why do they do that? It's a form of manipulation. It's a form of you of them meeting all your needs in the beginning so that you fall for them fast or hard. And then the absence of them creates the desire or want to chase after them. 
So it keeps that door open for them to come in and out whatever they choose or please. So again, be smart about that, Libra. All right, now we're moving on to Virgo. Let's see what's going on here with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Virgos for this month of February 2023? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh. <clears throat> we have a full moon in Leo tomorrow. Virgo, this is going to be affecting your spirituality. This is spiritual downloads, information that's coming to you, clarity of vision or of the path that you want to go towards. All right, let's see what's going on with Virgos. <clears throat> It's about making decisions and choosing to stick with those decisions, Virgo. <clears throat> what I'm hearing very strongly for you guys is, which surprises me because I know Virgos, you guys can be extremely analytical. You can be extremely almost perfection is something you're always seeking. But you've had certain opportunities where you could have been successful. This could have been relationships. This could be re regarding business and finances. <clears throat> but you've quickly changed your mind or you've changed or jumped ships too soon that you don't fully get to see the results of your hard labor, which I'm surprised because I don't usually see this in Virgos, but it's almost like you need to work in your patience. If you've been trying to draw something to you, when we're talking about manifestations, when we're talking about the law of attraction, when we're talking about spell work, even you are, you want it now. And it doesn't work that way. You have to be consistent at something in order to be able to see the results. And I feel like you've missed certain opportunities because of your impatience. This could be in regards to relationships, you guys. Especially those of you guys that have a lot of like shadow work that you need to do. Because there is a fear of not being in control or not having or feeling like you're in control of the relationship. The moment there is a small change in the habit or the routine, there is almost this panic of like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm, you know, I'm quickly losing control of the situation or I'm quickly losing control of my partner. And you go into this snowball effect of constantly creating arguments, fights, difficulties, resistance. And it's based purely off of your emotions. So this is the shadow work that needs to happen for you guys. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen, especially those of you guys that have a tendency of having the need to be in control. Because it is a insecurity that you need to work through. It's almost like this demanding need to want to build or create the perfect partner and you think or have a habit into going into relationships thinking, well, this is something I could work at. Spirit is telling you, no, you have to meet them where they're at and accept them. And if you cannot accept them, then they're not for you. You got to keep it pushing. What they're telling you is, when we talk about patience, right? 
patience in the aspect of giving yourself enough time to actually get to know someone. Like I said, it's about accepting them and meeting them where they're at. If it doesn't work for you right now, it's not going to work for you two years from now. There's controlling issues here. You have to work through that, Virgo. Now, when we're talking about finances and career, like I said, it's almost like <clears throat> you self-sabotage your success because you convince yourself that they're not appreciating you or that they're not giving you the results that you want to see. But right when you're at the brink of having those major life changes or major finances coming in, you give up or you're on to the next project or the next opportunity. You're not giving yourself enough time to see the results of your hard labor. So you need to work through that this month of February because there is success around you, Virgo. You just need to learn to maintain focus and consistency to the bitter end. What do I mean by that? If you decide you're going to take on something, see it out. Complete it. All right, let's see. What is the final message here for Virgo? Virgo, sun, moon, raising Venus. We have whew, 23. This is about partial loss, deficiency, humility. For some of you guys experiencing a bit of difficulties regarding your health, nothing that changing your nutrition or making it a little bit better will definitely help you. But this is about, like I said, partial loss. This is about humility. This is about experiencing Experiencing loss because of the lack of seeking it or seeing it through. For others of you, I'm going to keep it 100. It's about taking losses because you are accustomed to going or being very drawn to dirt, filth. renunciation this card to me represents like everything that is worldly right the drinking the partying the filth things that do not nurture your soul things that are temporarily it is important for you to seek out what is going to be beneficial for you long-term, Virgo. Stop seeking temporary satisfaction. <clears throat> All right, my lovelies. Now let's see what's going on with Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February, 2023. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For this month of February, 2023. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Leos. Leo, we're having a full moon in your sign tomorrow. Okay, here we go. 
your card. <laughs> your energy is potent. Your energy is strong right now, Leo. Focus, determined. Look at that. Super empowered, Leo. Strength is all about courage. It is about being so powerful that you're able to tame yourself and those around you. It is about putting hard work, determination behind what you're doing. Queen of Wands, empowered. Your sexuality is extremely heightened right now. Being able to draw in anyone or anything you wish for. And it comes with ease, without the, without the heavy lifting, without the hard work. But you're choosing. There is pride behind, behind everything that Leo does. You know? If you work with a Leo, they're probably the hardest person you, you see around. There's pride in everything you do. Success. I see you guys opening up to the possibility or opportunity of new love. For some of you guys, you guys are definitely very sensual or feeling like you are more sensual. And this could be a manifestation in, as an example, uh, maybe for some of you guys, you are, you know, eating a little bit more than usual. Um, Everything that has to do with fulfilling all your senses. Uh, so this could be, you know, eating a little bit more, maybe enjoying a glass of wine every night. This is sensuality that wants to come out. You have to be proactive with this, Leo. Because the more you're able to release that energy, you're vibrating to a very high frequency where you're able to draw in the things that you want. And I see success for you guys. But I also see an offering that's coming through. For some of you guys, it could be with someone at work. And you may be turned off by it. You may be put off by it. I see you like, oh, I don't know. I don't like to shit where I eat type of thing. But I feel like this is not just any one. This could be a superior that you find out has the hots for you, Leo. Could be someone of authority. But they're telling you, don't be distracted right now. You are going into a very successful cycle in your life. Secure the bag, baby. Secure the bag is what they're saying. If you're iffy about this person that's coming through for you guys in this reading that is in some way connected to your work or your finances, stay focused. Like I said, secure the bag. Things could get messy in the workplace. For some of you guys, I see travel coming up. Travel. new experiences. I feel like your senses, you're going to be experiencing the need or desire to experience life to its maximum through all your senses. This is sexually, uh, this is physically, this is emotionally, this is If you're not being sexually active right now, Leo, I'm going to tell you off the bat, get into some type of sport or something that you can release that tension or relieve yourself, you know? 
Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Add a little sex magic in your manifestation. You don't want to be tempted. Because then it gets complicated, you know? Talking about new beginnings here. New beginnings. Luck. Your luck is about to change, Leo. Exciting, exciting for you guys. All right, my lovelies. Now we are going to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February 2023. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys are interested in personal readings, definitely look at the description box below. You'll be able to find our online store there for readings, for spell work, for any of the services that we provide. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, here we go. All right, Cancer. Oof. Cancers, love is coming your way. For those of you guys that are currently in a relationship, you could have felt like there was a lot of imbalances or perhaps not seeing eye to eye, not really vibing. That's quickly going to be changing. Now, what they're telling you here is the two of pentacles is giving me almost the the feeling of very unstable emotions for some of you guys, it could be because you've been through very traumatic experiences in the past. Uh, maybe in the past you've had difficulty trusting people because they've let you down because they've hurt you. Um, and what they're telling you is that this progressively keeps affecting your love life. <clears throat> because it's really difficult to disconnect from what you've experienced. And I completely understand there's almost like this mistrust that is there. Um, but that's quickly going to be changing for you guys, especially those of you guys that have tried really hard, um, to stabilize a relationship or a partnership. And it just seems like, as quickly as it comes in, it goes out, or there is a lot of difficulty stabilizing commitments and relationships. But I feel like there is a new person that's coming for you guys, that's coming into your life or will be coming into your life that is going to change how you feel about yourself and how you view relationships. Because I see your perspective quickly changing. And it's solely based on so much love it's almost like it's almost like you're becoming whole again from all the love that they pour into you so i'm not you know i'm not sure if you guys have ever experienced um difficulty trusting people when we're talking about relationships and partnerships and then you meet this person that meets all your expectations and they go above and beyond even to the point of doing without you really tr like asking for it it's like they are very quick on picking up what your needs are what your desires are what you expect from a relationship this is a person that genuinely loves unconditionally and they love you so much and so hard that they heal you. They bring this confidence to you. They raise your confidence. They hold up a mirror and show you, reflect to you the amazing person you are. That's what I'm seeing for you guys. I'm seeing this wave of emotion come through me. And it brings peace to me. But it also makes me feel so wrapped up in this energy 
of pure and unconditional love. And for a lot of you guys, this is a new person. So you're not dealing with this person. If you've been dealing with a relationship that's been very unstable and you're still holding on to that and you're still holding on to making it work. For those of you that are dealing with that, this is already happening, meaning this is already unfolding. And that connection or that meeting, physical meeting, face-to-face -face type of thing, I see it in March. For those of you guys that are already in a relationship, this is a whole new person. Now, for those of you guys that are single, this person is coming in, whether you're ready or not. And I see it happening from now all the way to March. Your whole perspective on relationships is going to change with this person showing up in your life. Now, for others of you, doesn't have to be partnerships. This could be a friend. This could be a person that comes into your life, someone you've never met. <clears throat> but I'm going to be honest. I see this as a relationship that is so strong, almost like when people say that they fell in love with their best friend type of thing. It's a relationship that is built on unconditional love and they literally become your best friend. Beautiful energy, Cancer. What is the final message here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? for the month of February, final message in regards to the situation. Okay, we have number 36. This is about fate. At this point in time, Cancer, you're going into a cycle in your life where a lot of the changes that are going to be happening with you are not by accident. This is fate. This is also having faith. This is about karma. And karma is not necessarily associated with bad. This is cashing in your karma. The blessings that are being bestowed upon you. Based on previous actions. Beautiful, beautiful energy here for you, Cancer. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go on to Gemini. Let's see what's going on for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February, 2023. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. for the month of February, 2023. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Gemini, stop crying over spilled milk. It is time to surround yourself with positive people, with people that genuinely care for you and that love you, with friends, with family members, people that really help you. Feel good about yourself. There is almost a pacing back and forth about a situation that is out of your control at this point could be in regards to a relationship or some type of connection where there is almost a feeling of like a missed opportunity or some type of setback, a feeling of dealing with the loss of a connection or a relationship. And it's like you keep going through this cycle of reminiscing about the past or what could have been done in the past. They're telling you, stop crying over spilled milk. What has been 
what's been done is done. That is in the past. It is long gone. We can never change the past. The past is the past. It's there. It's it's happened. It is about what we do here in the present to be able to fully experience the future or what we, you know, draw into our future because our future <laughs> is ever evolving. It's ever unfolding. And in the present, meaning what we do now, how we feel about our outlook in life is going to be ultimately that manifestation. So if you continuously keep dwelling on the past and dwelling on what could have been done, that's not going to change. And all you're doing is bringing more of the energy of remorse or the energy of a wish not being fulfilled and you continuously keep experiencing that. And it's like a never ending cycle. When spirit is telling you, honey, you have the opportunity to create a new beginning. You have the opportunity of freeing yourself. And this happens all the time. I see it with clients when there's a breakup or some type of separation. It could have been the most toxic relationship ever. But when that person's absence is so potent, meaning you miss that person because they're not there, it's like you completely forget about the toxicity and all you can think of is the positive things that happened in that relationship. And somehow you forgot about everything that was toxic. And the reason for that is because when there is a acknowledgement of their presence, right? We miss them, we think of them. And then you start to dwell on the fact that they're not physically there, which creates the missing more. It becomes more stronger. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that was good for you. And what they're telling you here is you will be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You will see that your life is much more better what you think is a loss right now will be your blessing but you have to give yourself the opportunity and in order to move things along you need to stop dwelling on the past let go of the past gemini and this doesn't have to be relationships. This could be, you know, your everyday life. It could be that you feel that somehow the past, it's like you've romanticized about the past so much that you keep thinking that something in the past was like the best thing that ever happened to you. And what they're telling you is if you're going to see it that way, you need to see and remember the whole picture. The best is yet to come. What is lost or what is done is already done and it's already passed. All right, my lovelies, let's see what your final message card here is. What is the final oracle card here for Gemini? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. All right, so we have number nine. This is harmony. This is beauty politeness a gift perhaps meeting of someone new fast growth that is unfolding for you new beginnings you have to give yourself the opportunity to be happy again gemini you deserve it. All right, my lovelies. All right, let's move along now to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February 2023? 
Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. There is someone that will be getting your, your attention or you already have your eye on someone, but there is fear of a new beginning. For some of you guys, your comfort, <laughs> not wanting to get out of your comfort zone. I definitely see for some of you guys, it's someone that you have your eye on or someone has their eye on you. And I feel like... <clears throat> Uh, throughout the month of February, they're definitely going to be declaring themselves to you. They're going to uh, definitely take action. I feel like in the past, they haven't taken action. Um, and it could be potentially because you seem very closed off, Taurus. Uh, but I definitely see this person like eyeballing you. To not say the other word. <laughs> You've definitely created some type of lust behind someone um, and they have their eye on you. Now, this could be vice versa because it is, a, it is a general reading. It could be you, the one that has an interest for someone, but there is fear of rejection here. I see you guys constantly fighting change. If you look at the cards, we have the Ace of Wands here. New beginnings, new passion, desire, lust, Two of Swords, being stuck. It's like you want new passions. You want excitement in your life. But you're not really wanting or willing to make changes. So that keeps you emotionally closed off. But whether you're ready or not, change is here, Taurus. Universe is going to be pushing you towards new people. They're going to be pushing you towards situations or circumstances that get you or literally push you out of your comfort zone. Why we have the full card here and the death card. Transformation, change. Major transformation, change. The end of something to begin a new cycle in your life where you are emotionally available or where you're able to receive love. Oftentimes people will say, yeah, of course I'm, you know, open to love, but they're not really open to love because when people ask them their immediate answer or response is I'm not really looking for it. It's almost like a defense mechanism to protect your heart. Maybe for some of you guys, you guys have been through a shit ton of things where it left you a very sour taste in your mouth. But like the seasons, everything changes. And like the seasons, we also have to evolve. We have to grow. We have to accept that our singlehood is over. We need to embrace a new beginning. We need to embrace love. And that's definitely what I'm seeing for I'm seeing here for you guys. There is changes that are going to be happening in your love life, especially those of you guys that feel like there's been lack or non-existent love life. That's quickly going to be changing, but know and understand that partly the majority of the reason for it is because you've been stuck in not wanting to embrace new changes. But when we fight, <laughs> when we fight things or when we resist them, at some point, the death card shows up. At some point, the universe steps in and says, okay, well, whether you're ready or not, here we go. And they push you off the cliff. Metaphorically, metaphorically speaking, of course. They push you on the path of the person that is coming in for you. 
there's changes that are much needed in your life, Taurus. Especially when we're talking about romance and when we're talking about finances. You've been playing it safe far too long. What is the final message here for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? And I see this change quickly happening for you guys. You may already know who they're talking about at this point. For others of you, you will be knowing that someone has their, their eye on you or they will be revealing their intentions towards you sometime from now to the middle of February. And we have, number one, the writer. This is good news. Like I said, a messenger. Movement quickly unfolding. This is a positive outcome. This is arrival. It means the arrival of embracing a new chapter in your life is here. It's time to grab the bull by its horns, Taurus. All right, my lovelies. Finally, but not the least, Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of February, 2023. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my lovely hotheads. <laughs> Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I love Aries people. I've always been able to just, I can spot an Aries like in a full crowded room Somehow, they're always drawn to me and I'm always drawn to them. Of course, the eighth house has to do a lot with that. <laughs> but yes, Aries, very in passionate, intense people. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, what is unfolding for them for this month of February, 2023? Here we go. All right, Aries. I see this having a bit of miscommunication that's happening this month. Um, there's a lot of confusion regarding a situation where you feel like you are emotionally exhausted or at this point, um, not really interested. It's like, I see you guys emotionally checked out. <clears throat> and the reason for it is because of the lack of transparency or the lack of honesty. So I see someone that is presenting some type of situation to you and not being completely honest or transparent. And there was a feeling of having to pull back or almost like collecting your thoughts, detaching from the situation. For some of you guys, this could be romantically. Could have been a person that you were really interested in or really putting effort and energy towards. And you felt like there was inconsistency or lack of uh, recipro uh, reciprocity. And you had a moment of realization or a moment of really internalizing the situation and you got to a point where you felt emotionally exhausted or like you were over it so you pulled back and I feel like this person is coming back around and they may come back around with this incredible story <laughs> So what they're showing me here is almost like a person has a tendency of being very inconsistent and they try to dress that by playing the victim role. So again, if you were dealing with someone and you pulled your energy back or you stopped chasing them because of lack of honesty or transparency, they may reach out or come back into your life. Um, obviously because they've noticed that you're no longer chasing or that you're no longer trying to win them over. If they start telling you these crazy details, 
I should say these crazy stories with major details is because they are exaggerating. They are playing the victim role. Uh, they're trying to excuse their lack of consistency with you, basically. And what they're telling you is at this point, uh, Aries, you know exactly what it is that you bring to the table. You know exactly what it is that you deserve. And you should not settle for anything less than that. If this is regarding a family dynamic, there may have been a lot of misunderstandings because someone was trying to steer the pot. Um, like I said, if their explanation to you has to do with like crazy stories and very elaborate details, they are obviously exaggerating and they're trying to win you over or win the argument over. At this point, what they're telling you is just pull your energy back. Don't take the bait. Don't entertain it. Um, if a person cannot be completely honest or trans transparent with you, and you know that, there is always going to have, or you're always going to feel this uneasiness, right? Of not being able to fully trust them or believe what they're saying, especially if it's a family member that's trying to steer the pot. Completely disconnect from that situation. Pull back your energy. Don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. Um, I feel like this person lacks a lot of maturity. Uh, and it's almost giving me the energy of like something made extremely huge unnecessarily. So this is stress that is not called for. Um, this is stress that you don't need to be dealing with for this month. So again, pull your energy back. Protect your energy, Aries. Let's see what the final message is here. Final message for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to the situation. And we have number 20. So yeah, this is talking about, you know, public pub uh, publicity, facade, basically. This is uh, having to do with institutions, authority. More than anything, public is something that stands out very strongly in this card. So again, if there is like a family dilemma, family issue that comes along, I feel like it has more to do, the story they're telling has more to do with how they want to be perceived with the public or how they want to be like publicly, how they want to be perceived. There is definitely an image that they're trying to portray, that they're trying to present. Um, don't take the bait. Like I said, uh, don't fall for it because honestly it's bullshit. Um, and you will quickly find out the truth. We do have the ace of swords here. It is the lack of honesty and transparency. However, it is upright. Ace of Swords is cutting through the bullshit. It is being able to see clearly and concisely what's going on. Even when they're fighting for the truth to be, like for the truth to come out, they're fighting for it not to come out. Um, ultimately it will. So again, you will know what you need to know at the perfect timing. Don't let people get, you know, um, don't don't let people basically play you off of your emotions. Uh, they're just, like I said, trying to steer the pot. Don't fall into that. Uh, a lot of rumors, a lot of gossip happening this month for you guys. So uh, stay the course, uh, stay in control of your emotions um, and really protect your energy. Uh, be mindful of the people that you surround yourself with. Okay, my lovelies. All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. Definitely stay tuned as we will be doing the middle of the month love reading for all the signs. I want to wish you guys the very best and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye-bye.